the sound of the sword falling to the ground was mixed with the sound of Nandini's sad giggle. She said excitedly, Sir. God's will is different. Let the sword lie here. Go and hide. She said. Vandiyathevan did not listen to it and bent down to pick up the sword. He tried to lift it by its sharp tip. At the same time, Nandini stepped on the handle of the sword with one foot. No. The prince would have heard the sound of the sword falling in his ear. If the sword was not here, he would have doubts in his mind. Already, he doubts about themselves. Go away. Just disappear this time as you magically disappeared from here before. She said. Vandiyathevan got a small wound on his hand when he tried to grab the point of the sword. He dropped his sword and straightened up. Nandini saw that his inner hand was bleeding slightly. I will fulfill my promise to you. I will not kill my brother with my own hand. You will escape. If he finds you here. Go away. Go away at once. She begged along with Manamekala. Footsteps came closer. Vandiyathevan reluctantly rushed towards the storehouse of harps. He opened the barn door and went inside and disappeared. Footsteps were heard very recently, near the door. Vandiyadevan looked at Manamegali, who was staring in amazement at the place where he had disappeared, and said, Brother. Hide too. Hide behind the curtains of the bed. Get out of here without him knowing while we are talking. Said Nandini. Aditha Karikalan and Kanamaran came in the moment Manamekali disappeared behind the curtain of the bed. Karikalan looked around and approached Nandini. He noticed that the bed curtain had moved. But he didn't seem to notice. When he came close to Nandini, he saw the sword lying on the ground. Then, he stared at Nandini's face. Unable to bear the vision that penetrated Nandini's heart, she bent down as if to pick up the sword. Knowing Nandini's intentions, Carrie Gallon took his sword and overtook her. He peered from its base to its sharp tip. He also noticed a fresh blood stain on the tip. Then to Nandini he said, Devi. The sound we hear when we come is like the clang of this sword. It has slipped from their hands and fallen. It seems as if Valandi is ready in hand to welcome us. Isn't that the way to welcome the brave young tigers and the best young lions? said Nandini. Wild tigers and lions need sharp claws and teeth. But didn't God grant that the prancing spotted deer doesn't need them? said Aditha Karigalan. Couldn't the deer also need to use its antlers? Could it not also happen that the reindeer thanked the God who gave them horns? Have mercy and give me that sword. Nandini pleaded. No, no. It is fit for their hands. How can they hold a sword with the twigs created by Brahma to pick flowers and make garlands? said Kari Gallan. Oh God! There was a time when this poor man's hands eagerly picked flowers and made wreaths with desire. There was also a time when he waited and waited for the person who would light that wreath to come. Many ages have passed since such a daydream. Now the hands of this helpless orphan need to support the sword. Sir! Do not take that companion away from me!" said Nandini. Goddess! What is this talk? Do you call yourselves helpless orphans? How many young soldiers are waiting to carry out the task of their feet with their heads? Do they not know this? said Carrie Gallon. If I fail to escape and my foot falls on the head of such a ruffian, that leg will have to be amputated, sir. Is not the sword necessary for that? Oh! What kind of harsh speech is this? Is it to cut the feet of a Nam and I who have to learn to dance in the palace lofts to make the sound of Padach Salambu Kalir Kalir? If these words fall on the ears of the great farmer, what will his heart aspire to? Sir! Who cares about him? How boldly do the young tigers, who trembled and ran away at the sound of a roar, come out and move about now? Did not the young tigers get so bold after hearing the news that his land had been flooded? This weapon was used to keep those tigers from getting too close to me. I kept it. I asked for the help of this sword to protect the honor of the Mahapurusha who brought me to the world and gave me the life of a palace and kingship. As you said a moment ago, 
I learned to swing the sword with the hands that should have plucked flowers. Goddess! Is it really for that? When they put this sword in a box and worship it, and when they come to admire it with their soft cheeks and flower, is it to save the honor of the great reaper? Or to prevent the Nirmadars who approach them and laugh strangely at them? Is there no other purpose? What other purpose could there be, sir? Why? There could be any number of other motives. Perhaps the motive of revenge. Perhaps the motive of killing the enemy who had inflicted an immortal wound on their souls by ignoring the pleadings they had submitted to. Nandini bowed her head and let out a long sigh. Then, looking up at the prince, he said, Komakan. It is true that I had such a thought at one time. That is why I have been worshipping this warrior. I was waiting for that time to come. But when the time came, the pain in my arms was gone, and the uncertainty in my chest was gone. Now this sword is my chastity and my chastity. I will only use it to save my husband's honor. Please give it like this, she said. Shouldn't I shoulder that responsibility, Devi? Shouldn't I fulfill the duty of punishing those who harmed themselves or their husbands, said Aditha Kari Kalan. It is impossible for them. Can they punish their Arur friends for the sake of this wretched orphan? Why can't you? Of course you can. Nandini. I didn't fully believe what you said that day about Vandiyadeva on the lake island. Later, I came to know that everything was true from what Kantamaran said. Even if you forgive that bad guy, I'm not willing to forgive him. Tell me where he is, won't you tell me? No. My eyes are not blinded. Look. Aditha Kari Kalan roared angrily and stepped towards the curtain that covered the bed. Nandini touched his leg and got up on her knees, folded her arms and shouted, Come again. Don't. Don't. She said. Nandini. Save your mercy for other things. Don't show mercy to the scheming Sand Alan pretending to be my friend. Saying that, Aditha Kari Kalan walked up in defiance of Nandini. Nandini woke up looking on all four sides as if in awe. Seeing Kandamara who had been standing like a statue near the threshold all this time, he said, Oh! Stop him! She screamed. The dead statue came to life. But he did not move from his place. He gave a small, odd laugh and turned back into a statue. Kari Kalan went near the curtain of the bed with one hand brandishing his sword and drew it aside with the other. Inside, Manamekali, who appeared with a small sharp knife in her hand, screamed screech. Aditha Kari Kalan paused for a moment with his drawn sword and then tore the curtain of the bed with that sword. Aha! This tigress is standing here? Papa! Are her claws very sharp? He said ha 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 and laughed. Then he looked at Kanamaran and said, Friend! Take your sister and hand her over to her mother and leave. I don't know how many tiger cubs will be born in her womb. If she had been a prey to the sword of this heroic Pandya for so long, how many brave sons and daughters would the Chola country have had to lose? He said. Manamekali, who had really raged like a tiger just before, heard Aditha Karakalan's words and was moved. She was ready to leave the room by herself before Kanamaran called her. When the brother and sister left, Karakalan looked at Nandini and said, Devi, I have made them both go by playing a play. Let's open our hearts and speak the truth, shall we? He said. Nandini looked at Karakalan in genuine astonishment, Sir. Is it a drama you have acted? If so, it is an amazing act. I too am deluded into believing it to be true. She said. Nandini. I think you have no match in the world for acting. If you are deluded, you must admire my acting skills. Yet, when I drew my sword and went towards Manamegala's hiding place, you did not stop me. Why is that? Let Srihadadasa be added to my many crimes. Were you thinking that? Kari Kalan asked. Shiva Shiva. I am truly in love with that one woman in this world today. Am I just going to watch her die too? I thought you will know for yourselves when the curtain is removed. Kari Kalan smiled. 
the meaning of this laughter is not understood. Said Nandini. The reason you gave me is enough for me to kill Manamekali. Said Kari Galan. Still don't understand. If you love someone, he or she will become my arch enemy. Don't you know this? I know, I know I'm such a wretch. But I don't think their animosity will extend to this undisguised young lady. Or maybe your intention was the other way around. You might have thought that if I killed Manamegali, Kandhamara would take revenge on me. Or you might have thought that she would kill me by throwing the small knife in her hand before I could kill her. Alas! What is this? What horrible imaginings! Imaginations? You have a more terrible purpose in your mind than my terrible imaginations. Tell me the truth. Do not fan the fire that burns within me. Why did you ask me to come to this Kadampur palace? Why did you make Palyavatarayar go to Tanjore? To divide the Chola Empire and make a reconciliation between me and Manamekala. Don't tell me you went to such lengths to get married and have fun. I don't believe all those stories. If I did, I wouldn't have come here. Then why did you come here, Comagan? With what hope did you come to this place? Hope? I have no hope. All that fills my soul is despair and hopelessness. I want to leave this country and this world. Before that, I came to see you once and say goodbye. Once you asked me for a boon. Conte. You bowed with your hands. In my rage and ferocity I did not give you what you demanded. Then I regret it every moment. If there is any remedy for it, I have come to do it and go. Nandini. Tell me. If in any way I can make amends for it, tell me. Nandini looked at Kari Kalan who said this in a compassionate voice and said, Come again. There is no remedy for that. The dead are the dead. No one in this world has the power to make the dead alive. They say it in stories and epics. We have never seen it. You have come here with the intention of killing me with the sword of Veera Pandian. Fulfill your purpose without hindrance. That's why I got rid of Kanamaran and his sister. Here it is. Get this sword. Kari Kalan held out the sword. Nandini took the sword. Her hands trembled as she held the sword. Then her whole body trembled. Tears welled up in his eyes. Vimal and Thambal joined in the heartbreakingly sad voice. There will be no better opportunity to end your guilt and fulfill your vow. You will do me no harm by killing me. You are the one who helped. He said. Nandini restrained the raging Vimal and said, Comagan. I have nothing to hide from you. I don't want to hide anything from you. Everything you said about the purpose of my coming here is true. That is also the purpose of asking you to come here. But when the opportunity arose, I had no pain in my hands and no courage in my chest. As soon as I heard the footsteps of the searcher, the sword slipped from my hand and fell down. Look. My hands are trembling. She said. Yes, yes. I am watching it. But I don't know the reason. I know how firm your heart once was. I think that Brahma created your heart with the metal that was left over from the Vajrayuta for Devendra. What is the reason that your heart is so soft? It was because of the news that their comrade Vandiyathevar had told them. Aha! Uh -huh. You're telling me the news he found out that you and I were born together? Did you say you didn't believe it when we were talking on the lakeside island the other day? Did you say it was a ruse by someone to separate us again? I tried not to believe it. I tried so hard to do it. But something else he told me today shook my chest to the core. Aha! Uh -huh. What is that? Some other new fantasy? What else did he say that was new? He told me about the mother who gave birth to me. He said he saw her on the island of Ceylon. I have no reason to disbelieve that. Come again. I asked for a boon once before. They didn't give it. You said you regret it till today. I ask for a boon again today. Will you give me this? If you ask specifically what the boon is, I say I can give it, I can't. Come again. 
It is true that I vowed to avenge the death of Veera Pandya. I took a vow that either I would kill them with this sword of the Pandya clan engraved with the fish symbol, or I would kill myself. I did not have the courage in my chest to kill them, nor did I have the strength in my hands. By killing myself, if I think that I may die in front of them, I am not strong enough for it. I am afraid of what I will do if I try half-heartedly and not lose my life. Lord! Help me to fulfill my vow. Take this sword and kill me with your own hand. Then my vow will be finished. In this life. Not only that, I will be grateful to them in future lives too. Saying this, Aditha Karikalan again took the sword extended by Nandini. Ha 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 he let out a monstrous laugh that echoed throughout the palace. <laughs>